Residents of Chicago, this is our town. This is our city. And we, the Chicago Police Department, we're committed to protecting this town for you. Standing on Michigan Avenue in front of images of looting suspects police are seeking, David Brown unveiled his strategy to protect businesses this weekend. Early Monday morning, caravans of cars flooded the Mag Mile, the Loop, and River North. Hundreds of people poured out of the cars, broke into stores, and looted them. What sparked it? Police believe it was misinformation about an officer-involved shooting in Inglewood Sunday that spread on social media. This weekend, an additional 1,000 officers will be working. The superintendent says police will deploy stop strips to puncture tires of cars and caravans. They'll block streets, box in looters, and call in tow trucks to haul away their cars. Police made more than 100 arrests Monday. The state's attorney's office has filed 42 felony charges. We are taking a firm stand that we will arrest you. If you get away and escape, we will find you. And so, although we learn how brazen these looters are, what I want the looters to learn is how committed we are. Those charges include burglary, theft, gun possession, and criminal damage to property. Mayor Lori Lightfoot will have more to say about protecting commercial corridors this afternoon. On the Mag Mile, Judy Wang, WGN News. Thank you, Judy. Three people are dead and seven others wounded in gun violence in Chicago since 9.30 last night. In the South Shore neighborhood, a man was inside his home on 75th and Chappelle when he was shot in the arm and chest. It happened at 11.15. Police sources say the shots appear to have come from the back of the home. The victim has been identified as Aaron Williams. He was 28. There is new information about last weekend's attempted abduction in Carroll Stream. Witnesses say the man in this sketch tried to kidnap a 13-year-old girl. Three other kids came to her aid and the suspect eventually let her go. Police believe he's the same man in the video from Glendale Heights taken last year. In this case, the suspect tried to kidnap a 17-year-old girl. He followed her home from a park. Police say he provided, uh, they also provided side-by-side -side photos showing the suspect from 2019 last week. And if you recognize him, please contact the Carroll Stream Police Department. The National Weather Service confirms four more tornadoes touched down during Monday's severe storms. That brings the total to 15. A newly confirmed twister in Cook County hit Oak Forest and Midlothian. The others were in DeKalb and Kane Counties and the town of Kentland, Indiana, southeast of Kankakee. A little less than 54,000 ComEd customers are still without electricity in the wake of Monday's severe weather. It is estimated 70% of Harvey is still without power. Some communities may be without electricity into the weekend. ComEd has 3,300 crew members, including 1,400 from other states, fixing the outages. Let's get a live look at our first forecast now. Demetrius Ivory is here. Hi, D. Hey, Dana, Dina, it's uh, it's Mike today. Uh, Dee D is uh, going to be in later on this afternoon, I think, for Tom at uh, 4 o'clock. But uh, we do have a gorgeous day going on across the Chicagoland area. It is another sunny day with uh, light winds and, uh, well, warm temperatures. Nothing too extreme as far as the heat and humidity is concerned. We do have... Uh, uh, temperatures that uh, right now across the area are starting to warm up into the uh, mid to upper 80s. 86 officially at O'Hare, 79 at Waukegan, 81 in downtown Chicago, 82 to, in LaPorte, as well as 82 in Valparaiso at this hour. We see the humidity levels begin to uh, creep up a little bit uh, into the uh, mid 60s, and that's making things a bit more uncomfortable, but uh, nothing extreme yet as far as that is concerned. Right now, we've got 86 at O'Hare, east wind at 10 miles per hour, dew point at 58. And the feels like temperature with the uh, modest level of humidity uh, sitting at 85, a degree cooler than the actual temperature. Shooting for high of 88 to, to 89 today. Normal is about 82, so above normal for this time of the year, but no threat to the record of 99 set back in 1944. And sunrise and sunset, boy, uh, the sunset, it's setting now before 8 o'clock. I really noticed it yesterday. 
are starting to lose some time as far as uh, the daylight is concerned as uh, the seasons begin to shift a little bit. Storms to our south, storms to our north, but nothing locally here in Chicago, and that's the way it's going to stay all day today and into tonight. Uh, there is a cold front, though, up to our north that is uh, kicking off those storms in Minnesota and the Dakotas. That's going to slide south in our neighborhood later on tomorrow. And it's, it'll weaken as it does approach, uh, the front will, but uh, still could be strong enough to kick up a thunderstorm or two. Big picture across the rest of the country showing there is uh, some shower and thunderstorm activity in the southeast, but the rest of the country is uh, pretty quiet, including out in uh, Los Angeles, where yesterday uh, there was uh, some shower activity. Uh, we do expect uh, sunshine to continue today. It could be a brief little shower uh, later on this afternoon in portions of lower Michigan. But here comes the front, and you can see by tomorrow afternoon at 1 o'clock, it's not going to be very active. Uh, scattered shower and storm could fire up along the front as it pushes through during the late afternoon and evening hours, but it does not look like it's a big deal. I wouldn't cancel any uh, afternoon or evening plans uh, for tomorrow because of this uh, rain threat. Uh, looks like in worst case scenario, maybe 30 minutes of rain if you get hit by a shower to maybe six at the max, 60 minutes at the max. So again, this does not look like it's going to be a big deal rainfall wise for us in Chicago tomorrow. Uh, cooler weather is on the horizon for next week. We'll talk about those numbers as well as the full forecast coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Mike. Well, the Chicago Bulls fired Jim Boylan as the head coach, and this team's search for a replacement is now underway. The team's executive vice president of basketball operations, Arturis Karnishevis, says he decided a fresh approach and an evolution in leadership was necessary. Boylan came to the Bulls as an associate head coach during the 2015-2016 season. He was later named the head coach in December of 2018. Since then, he amassed an overall record of 39 wins and 84 losses. Coming up, the first family registers for mail-in ballots as the White House continues to question the safety of vote by mail. And after registering its first COVID-19 vaccine this week, Russia offers to lend a hand to the U.S. cause. How the American government is responding. And big changes coming to the Magnificent Mile. Why an iconic retailer says it's moving out. Antenna TV is TV how it was meant to be. Where neighbors come over for dinner. Oh, Mr. Wilson, come on in. It's where friends are family. Friends, we're friends forever, huh? One big happy family again. <laughs> And family is everything. Antenna TV. TV how it was meant to be. Keep Tom Skilling and the Chicago Weather Center close at hand. For Tom's up-to-the-minute forecast, to track storms in your area and get severe weather alerts. And use it to send Tom your weather photos that could be used on TV. Download the Chicago Weather Center app today. Are you missing one or more teeth? Replace single or multiple teeth with mini dental implants starting at $63 per month. Get the smile you want. Call now or visit mini dental implant centers of Chicago.com. Welcome to your new boutique inspired senior living experience where state of the art amenities and thoughtful details elevate the everyday. Nourish your mind, body and spirit with engaging activities. Enjoy chef inspired meals made from scratch and sweet treats. Experience our high tech, high touch care because the health and well being of our residents and team members come first. Reserve a private apartment or suite and write your own story at Anthology Senior Living. I was the lead gunner of the convoy that we had. While I was suppressing fire, I felt a flick on my upper biceps area. They ended up reconstructing my arm instead of amputating. I don't have full use of it. Right after my recovery, I had to find myself again and see what else I could do to continue my selfless service. The coalition came to a handful of us with an idea of having a nonprofit that solely focuses on those coming back wounded from Iraq and Afghanistan. We would have the opportunity to help others that have been in our boots. Having an organization like the Coalition to Salute America's Heroes, putting me back into working with wounded troops helped me to process my injury. Life is full of trials and tribulations. Life is full of ups and downs. And it's the way you handle yourself through those trials and tribulations. I'm Sergeant Mary Herrera, and my alive date was November 8th, 2003. For more information, visit saluteheroes.org.
Weeknights at 4, count on Chicago's very own. Trusted Chicago anchors Ben Bradley and Lotus Duarte with news. Meteorologist Demetrius Ivory with weather. And Jarrett Payton with sports. Watch WGN Evening News at 4, weeknights. President Trump is reportedly expected to visit his younger brother today at a hospital in New York. Robert Trump was a former top executive at the Trump Organization. According to CNN, he was previously hospitalized in the spring with a serious condition, but we don't know what. The nature of his illness and current condition has not been released. Well, the battle over mail-in voting is intensifying after President Trump said he opposes giving much-needed money to the Postal Service because he doesn't want to expand mail-in voting. John Lawrence has more. The presidential election takes place in just over 80 days. Some will take part in the political process by putting their ballots in the mail. President Trump wants to block an expansion of voting by mail by refusing to support funds for the Postal Service. One of the reasons the Post Office needs that much money is to have all of these millions of ballots coming in from nowhere and nobody knows from where and where they're going. A spokesman for presumptive Democratic nominee Joe Biden calls the president's stance an assault on democracy. Sure, Trump. Okay, guys, let's go. Let's go. Come on. You guys want an election. The president says a coronavirus funding package is on hold due to Democrats demanding money for the USPS. They want three and a half billion dollars just for the ballots themselves. Why it's so much, I don't know. There is no evidence mail-in voting is prone to fraud, and Democrats say Mr. Trump's claim is all smoke and mirrors. He's been afraid for a while. He knows that on the legit, it'd be hard for him to win. So he wants to put obstacles of participation. Mail -in voting has been used across the country for decades. It has proven to be safe. It has proven to be effective. Despite the frequent blasting of mail-in ballots, multiple people in the Trump administration, including the president himself, vote by mail. I'm John Lawrence reporting. President Trump and First Lady Melania requested mail-in ballots for Tuesday's primary election in Florida, despite his opposition to mail-in voting in general. President Trump says the system has been fixed and is secure in Florida, which is a key state for him in this election. Next, Dean shares his picks for what to watch online and on demand this weekend. When your air conditioning goes out and it's 95 degrees, call King. We'll respond and have you comfortable quickly. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. King Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing is a factory authorized carrier dealer and recipient of the Better Business Bureau's Torch Award. Call today for our 40 point air conditioner tune up. You can always count on King. Hello, King. The right to play on any playing field, you have earned it. The right to hold a job, you have earned it. The right to study in any school, you have earned it. The right to be anyone's neighbor, you have earned it. You have taught us that what matters is not power or politics, weapons or wealth. What truly counts is the courageous spirit and the generous heart. The days of separation and segregation are over. WGN News is breaking news. We have breaking news this morning. A chaotic scene, looting and rioting spree hits the central business district. WGN was in the air. So they took whatever was left from the store. And had live reports from the ground. We heard glass breaking, just a chaotic situation. We heard live from the mayor, the police chief, and the governor. We'll continue to offer state police. And had reaction all morning from community leaders. Got to be condemned by everybody. For breaking news and continuing coverage of the unrest, stay with WGN News.
Russia offered to help the U.S. develop a coronavirus vaccine, but the U.S. reportedly declined. A Russian official told CNN there's a general sense of mistrust of Russia on the American side. The report comes after Russia announced this week it had created a COVID-19 vaccine, and Russian President Vladimir Putin said his daughter had taken it. U.S. officials say Russia's vaccine is not considered to be well-developed and that American vaccines go through three phases of rigorous testing. More than 20 vaccines are being tested in trials around the world. A church in Illinois state capitol is trying to make worshipers feel more comfortable attending in-person services. The Progressive Church of God in Christ in Springfield started installing plastic barriers in between its pews. More will be put up soon. The pastor says online services aren't for everyone and the church is committed to preventing the spread of COVID-19. Everyone is not capable of doing Zoom. So we wanted to say, if you are not able to go on Zoom and you're willing to come to the church, we were gonna set the stage for you to be able to come here and feel comfortable. Capacity at the services is also limited. AMC theaters will reopen on August 20th with tickets at the same price they cost in 1920, 15 cents a piece. Tickets are already available online and start at select theaters around the country in compliance with state health guidelines. The 15 cent price tag will only be valid on opening day. The theater also plans to screen classic movies like Back to the Future, Ghostbusters and Star Wars. Tickets for those older titles will be $5. Time for the buzz now from a new Netflix movie to reboots and documentaries. There's plenty to watch at home this weekend. Here's Dean's picks. Welcome to Project Power. Our goal is simple, the next evolution of the human species. Oscar winner Jamie Foxx and Joseph Gordon-Levitt team up in the Netflix blockbuster Project Power after a drug is developed that give people temporary superhuman abilities. Foxx and Gordon-Levitt lead a team to try to stop the sinister forces behind it all. See it now on Netflix. A message of unity, as good as it sounds, is not winning anyone any elections. On Apple TV Plus, there's the Sundance award-winning documentary Boy State, following a group of civic-minded teenagers who travel to Austin, Texas to set up their own mock government and learn the pragmatism and politics needed to combine with their own ideological convictions. For reality TV adventure, there's world's toughest race eco challenge, Fiji, following 66 teams on a grueling 11-day expedition. It's now on Amazon Prime. And the entire season of HBO's reboot of Perry Mason is now available on HBO Max. Perry and his faithful partner Della Street are back, but forget about Raymond Burr's iconic TV performance. Matthew Rees now plays a scruffier version of the crusading lawyer from the Earl Stanley Gardner novels. For summer blockbusters, all three original Jurassic Park films are now streaming on Netflix. While we wait for the sequel to be released, fly into the danger zone with Tom Cruise in the original Top Gun on Amazon Prime. And finally, an underdog that's become one of the most popular movie musicals in decades. Lots of you liked Hugh Jackman's The Greatest Showman better than I did. Now you can relive it all as it joins Disney+. Plus. At least there's something else to watch if you've already had your fill of Hamilton. Plus. As always, you can get my movie reviews and home video picks sent right to your phones every Friday just by texting the word Dean to 97999. Hope you have a safe weekend. Dean Richards, WGN News. Thank you, Dean. And after the break, we're visiting Lake Shelbyville near to cater for Destination Illinois. Maintaining your health is more important now than ever. That's why DuPage Medical Group continues to provide the great care you've come to expect while adapting to these challenging times through additional safety measures and patient pre-screening. After all, you should always feel confident in keeping your close connection with the physicians who know you so well. Learn more today at SchedulDMG.com. DuPage Medical Group. We care for you. 
Hi, I'm Colin Wickstrom. Cars are our family business. New vehicles we believe in, service we stand behind. All for a community we love. We are Wickstrom Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram of Barrington. Stop by for the summer clearance event. This season on the Mel Robbins Show. All right, here we go. I'm on a mission to help you get the life you deserve. There are millions of women that feel this way. She's pissed off. Your ex has moved on. You will never get out of debt. When you choose different thoughts, things start to change. This is why I love this show. The Mel Robbins Show, weekdays. Today at 1 on WGN. Never miss breaking news with WGN News App Alerts. The latest on COVID-19 and other important stories are just one touch away. Stay up to the minute by downloading the WGN News app from the Apple Store or Google Play. Then opt in for our push notifications. Thank you. Thank you. Now a correction to a story we ran earlier in the week. We reported on a group of community leaders and activists upset about the closure of Mercy Hospital in Bronzeville. We mistakenly reported that St. Anthony's Hospital is slated to close as well. This is not the case. There are no plans for St. Anthony Hospital to shut its doors and WGN of course regrets the error. Macy's has reportedly notified its water tower place landlord it wants to leave the Magmile location. According to a report in Crane's Chicago Business, the company's not happy with the police response during the recent lootings. But another source told Crane's negotiations have been in the works for years, following a $31 million revenue drop since 2014. The store has been an anchor for water tower place since it opened in 1975. Back then, of course, it was called Marshall Fields. United Airlines moved its network operations center from Willis Tower back to its former headquarters in Elk Grove Village following this week's downtown looting. It's the second time in three months that's happened. United made the same move in late May after flooding knocked out the building's power. Most of the airline's 5,000 Willis Tower employees have been working remotely since the start of the pandemic. A near north icon is closing sooner than expected because of the pandemic. The Rainforest Cafe was planning to close in a little over a year once its lease expired, but the pandemic forced the restaurant to close in March. No word on what will happen to that giant green frog on the building's roof. Talk about hard work paying off. For years, Claudio Velez has made the rounds to Chicago bars selling his famous tamales in the to those in need of some late night sustenance. Yesterday, he opened his new restaurant, the Tamale Guy Chicago in Ukrainian Village. In less than an hour, he was sold out of the thousand tamales he had already made. In fact, walk up customers were out of luck too. The entire inventory was spoken for by online orders. Velez's loyal patrons also repaid his decades of late night service during the pandemic by contributing more than $34,000 to a GoFundMe page when his income was shut off by the shutdown. Well, people are staying closer to home during the pandemic and enjoying the lakefront. But it's not just Lake Michigan that's seeing traffic this summer. In our latest Destination Illinois, Amelia Henderson takes us to one of the state's biggest lakes. With only a few lakes in the state of Illinois, Lake Shelbyville is one of the biggest with 172 miles of lakeshore. It is one of the biggest in southern Illinois. Despite the global pandemic, Lake Shelbyville has seen a record number of visitors in 2020. For the whole month of June and July, you know, our beaches were, you know, people were driving miles and miles and hours to come. 
you know, to use our facilities. So it's been a very interesting year, but with everything that's going on right now, I think people have really found Lake Shelbyville. With the miles of shoreline at this lake, it makes it easy for guests to enjoy the many water activities it has to offer. From swimming, using the day use areas to picnic, going boating, hunting, and camping. Although boating and jet skiing are a popular activity on the lake, the main attraction is the fishing. I would say fishing is number one, um, just because you have the opportunity to do that longer. It's a longer season than just your regular pleasure boaters. Great crappie uh, fishery. Um, walleye fishery is very good in here. So um, there's definitely trophy walleye, trophy crappie. And we currently hold the state record for muskie. We also have a, an organization called the Lake Shelbyville Fish Habitat Alliance that has been doing some tremendous work around the lake, putting different artificial structures in to help with the fishing and it seems to be working. While water activities are the main attraction, the original purpose of Lake Shelbyville is to prevent flooding through the dam. The number one mission here at Lake Shelbyville is for flood control. And the reason why that was needed is because of the excessive flooding that was done downstream. So, you know, that's Lake Shelbyville's number one purpose. Despite the global pandemic, Lake Shelbyville is one location still offering all amenities through the remainder of 2020. At Lake Shelbyville for Destination Illinois, I'm Amelia Henderson. And you can find more interesting destinations around the state by going to WGNTV.com slash Illinois. We've got the day's top stories coming up next. We'll be right back. Never miss breaking news with WGN News App Alerts. The latest on COVID-19 and other important stories are just one touch away. Stay up to the minute by downloading the WGN News app from the Apple Store or Google Play. Then opt in for our push notifications. Light the night means hope. Every time I come, I always take a moment to really reflect on how lucky I am. Knowing that we're all giving back to fight the same cause means that there's hope and there will be a, a cure someday. This evening brings many people together, fully aligned with one common mission and vision. Every local event is an opportunity to celebrate survivors, to remember those who have been lost to cancer, and to recommit ourselves to the fight against cancer. Everyone's been touched by cancer in some sort of way, shape, or form, and to see that we're all in this together and we're all here to fight it, to see all those lights lit up throughout the park is just a really humbling and powerful moment. As a cancer survivor, I feel that Light the Night is very important. And this event truly gives survivors hope. When you see these survivors doing this walk, it shows you why you're here and why you need to continue to do better to find that next cure. The Baxter Family Survival Guide. Dad, you taught us to be self-sufficient. And yet, you're all still here. Rule number one, expect the unexpected. If you want money, maybe you should do what other people do. Get my own reality show. Dad, I'm trying. Rule number two, learn to adapt. You're gonna use a glass, right? Fine, hand me the big one. Rule number three, stand your ground. You know, when we got married, I thought I was a smart one. <laughs> Last Man Standing. Tonight at 8 on WGN. Hey folks, it's your old pal Frank Wolanski. My air conditioning broke, so instead of sweating my lamb fries off inside, I decided to move the old boob tube out back on this lovely summer evening until my wife Barb fixes the AC. Lucky for me, I got it out here just in time to catch three great comedies starting at 11. The WGN Nightcap, weeknight starting at 11, presented by Huntington Learning Center. No, Barb, I have no idea where you left your socket wrench. Watch Sarah Jindra with traffic weekdays on WGN Morning News. You're watching Chicago's very own WGN News with Dina Baer, Julie Unruh, and Demetrius Ivory with weather. This is WGN Midday News. In about 30 minutes, Mayor Lori Lightfoot will hold a news conference where she's expected to announce the plan to protect Chicago businesses and neighborhoods from possible looting and violence. Chicago police are taking steps to prevent a repeat of last weekend's looting in the city, and police are seeking to reassure businesses they'll be ready to protect their property. Downtown bridge and ramp closures will continue to be part of that strategy, and CPD will deploy an extra 1,000 street officers. More than 40 of last Sunday's looters have now been charged with felonies.
Demonstrators plan to shut down the Dan Ryan Expressway Saturday as well with a Black Lives Matter march. The march kicks off at noon at Robert Taylor Park near 47th and Federal, then heads to the Dan Ryan. State police say they're coordinating with organizers to set up a safe route of travel. They also say they'll ensure public safety while protecting the rights of those seeking to peacefully protest. In a letter to the U.S. Attorney's Office, Chicago Police Union President John Catanzara suggested blocking an interstate highway is, quote, an act of terrorism. There, there are nearly 200 investigations underway into complaints against Chicago police following the death of George Floyd. The Civilian Office of Police Accountability says it received about a thousand complaints of abuse from the protesters after Floyd's death at the end of May. According to the Chicago Sun-Times, COPA determined about 170 had enough evidence to warrant an investigation. COPA has not commented on the investigations or if there are any racial patterns to the complaints. Police are investigating two carjackings on the north side that happened within hours of each other and just a mile apart. The first robbery happened early yesterday morning in the 2300 block of North Shakespeare Avenue in Bucktown. A man was standing outside his black Jeep brand Cherokee when two armed males approached him, pulled out a gun and demanded his keys and backpack. The thieves then used that stolen Jeep to target another victim. You're like, you know, you've got a gun staring right at you. You know in your mind, you're like, okay, this is life or death. Let me do what, you know, I need to do. That's, I mean, definitely, definitely scarier seeing that that's, that's happened around here. So, um, yeah, we won't be doing too late, uh, late walks, maybe. In the second case, the robbers flashed a gun and then stole the woman's Nissan hatchback. No one was injured in either carjacking. One suspect was wearing a yellow hoodie. The other had dreadlocks and a bark beanie. The number of COVID-19 cases across Illinois now tops 200,000 since the start of the outbreak. Health officials reported more than 1,800 new cases Thursday and 24 more lives lost. The positivity rate is at 4%. An employee at the LaSalle County Courthouse in Ottawa tested positive for COVID-19. Those who were in close contact with this worker are now, now self-quarantining and will get tested. Areas of the courthouse also underwent a major cleaning. The court continues to enforce face masks and social distancing while in the building. The civil courts at the courthouse are taking precautionary steps and attempting to minimize in-person hearings for non-emergency issues. They will do remote hearings in all civil cases when possible until further notice. Some of Chicago's Catholic school teachers say the Archdiocese's plan for in-person learning is putting everyone at risk. But the Archdiocese says it is taking every possible precaution to keep teachers and students safe. WGN's Eric Rung is live with more on the controversy as parents prepare to send their kids back to school. Eric? Well, good morning. The Archdiocese says it is ready to welcome students back to class. However, some teachers are expressing some concern and at least one is expressing them now publicly. With cases of COVID-19 trending upward in Chicago and the state, Chicago Public Schools decided students would at least start the year e-learning, while the Chicago Archdiocese is continuing down the path of in-person learning for its 70,000 Chicago area students. It's good that people are concerned. The Archdiocese Chief of Human Resources, Justin Lombardo, says the plan they have in place for in-person learning follows CDC and public health guidelines and was signed off on by a panel of doctors the Archdiocese has to review its plan. And said that the criteria we're establishing, as long as they're followed, will provide safe space for a, a return. It includes keeping 15 to nearly two dozen kids in a class with the same students and teachers every day. So if there is a positive case, the Archdiocese believes it will be contained to just that one classroom, which will quarantine for 14 days. There will be daily temperature checks before entering the schools. Extra cleaning and social distancing guidelines are to be followed. Teachers, staff, and students must also wear masks at all times. It's not safe. Everyone is scared to death. People aren't sleeping. They're anxious. She says what her colleagues, students, and parents are voicing privately. Kids are kids. They're going to take off their masks. They're going to sneeze. They're going to pick their nose. They're going to do all sorts of things. How do you social distance children? How do you keep them from... To, how do you... How do you how do they keep their masks on? Just that simple thing. When a child gets sick, 
how can I go up to that child if I'm supposed to stay six feet away? Limbardo is convinced the plan laid out by the Archdiocese allows for in-person learning safely. And if any of the medical guidance changes, the Archdiocese says it's ready to pivot to all e-learning. Sage says the Archdiocese should follow CPS's lead and at least begin the year e-learning and as the numbers allow, slowly bring students and staff back. Now, the Archdiocese says it does have a plan for parents who do not feel safe sending their kids back to class. They would say they do have an e-learning curriculum ready to go. We're live this morning. I'm Eric Rung, WGN News.